Hey there, how are you? How are you? Doing well. Good. Good. What's happening? Congrats on the box set, by the way. Thank you. It looks awesome. It does? Mm -hmm. I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't got it yet. <laughs> so leaving on my copy. Uh, it is impressive, 20 DVDs. Yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. It is. I'm just like, did they just clear out the warehouse? <laughs> I was thinking maybe it would end up in the, like, the criterion closet at some point. You know my one issue with it? Hmm? Meatwad was never a hamburger patty. The bun, the bun is in your mind. That was his catchphrase. Yeah. That was his original catchphrase. Yeah. And to have to see him on a bun, I was like, you gotta reshoot this. And they're like, it's already printed. <laughs> so never mind. How many explosions can we expect to see in Plantasset? Oh, a plethora. And can I play At a drinking game three. to it? Will I get alcohol poisoning if I play a drinking game to all the explosions? <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know what? I haven't counted the explosions. I probably should. I've seen it so many times at this point. I should focus on some of the, like I, I did, I did notice though there was one of my animation directors will be so pissed when he sees this, but <laughs> there is one line by one character. It's a very short line. But the character's lips do not move. That should be uh, that should be the game that we play. Can you spot the mistake in the movie? Um, but no, no, no explosions and no. Uh, I think the campfire that we used for the explosions appears once in the movie, but I, I'm not telling when. Is there commentary in the DVD? Yes, yes, but it's not uh, very. Um, uh, insightful because <laughs> many of the people we brought in had not seen the movie oh, okay. <laughs> and they were like trying to watch it as they were commenting on it <laughs> Carrie and Dana but both neither one of them had seen it <laughs> and they were like come on man <laughs> no it's all right it's it's funny it, 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 it's it's funny yeah the DVD's got a ton of cool uh, ton of cool stuff we um, there's an interactive element in the in the movie that, without I'm not exaggerating, this I have not seen or heard of any other movie doing what this is. I don't want to tell you what it is, but when you see it tonight, uh, and it's not going to be activated tonight, but it will be activated in November eighth. Is it a cinema? <laughs> no, no, but I know what you like. <laughs> um, but uh, this interactive element is super, super, super cool. But that said, we had to dial it way back. And on the DVD, there is a longer version of this interactive element that is really, really, really funny. I'm proud of it. But it's got you know some of the basic stuff, the animatic, and it's uh, and we did a shoot with our group. The DVD is a good. It's got a lot of nice little features, so, yeah, it's cool. Has writing or um, performing these characters changed for you at all over the, the evolution of the show? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Miwad used to be, he was so hard, like, every executive that we talked to in the beginning were like, I would replace that voice because I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, what's the problem? <laughs> this is what he said about. It. But it was just a voice that I would do, and Matt would laugh. So we were like, this is what we're going to do. But so over time, he's gotten even more mush mouth and southern, you know. He's just like, how y'all doing? How you, how your cousin and all them? <laughs> uh, and Carl probably has lowered my voice an octave. Um, all that screaming. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of screaming. Still sarcastic, but a lot of, a lot of, uh, what are you doing in there? <laughs> I really need to get out of my yard. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to have a conniption. <laughs> I can't be responsible. Um, and Shake, you know, once we cast Dana, we sort of, he's still bombastic, but he's bombastic in the way Dana is bombastic <laughs> with people. <laughs> And Carrie's always been like the same consistent Frylock, you know, just, uh, and we we kind of, he started as the straight man, and then he kind of 
we gave him more uh, personality as he went. And in a weird sort of way, like Carrie is Carrie's the star of the movie, or Frylock is the star of the movie. Um, so, I don't know, we were thrilled about it. We were real excited about it, and we just hope the fans like it as much as we do. So, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. What was it like getting Joe Firestone and Peter, Peter Sarabinowitz and uh, Tim, uh, Tim Robbins? Uh, we have, um, they're all, I mean, they're all great. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, Tim, uh, I'm trying to think how I knew, oh, we cast Tim and Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell before I Think You Should Leave kind of pops. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so it was nice to get him. Uh, we got uh, Robert Smigel, who was going to come to this thing tonight, and then he couldn't, but he's like super funny. Natasha Rothwell from uh, uh, The White Lotus is in this thing. Uh, Chris Powell. Uh, the comedian um, Joe Firestone, uh, Sarah Fenowitz was awesome. Uh, uh, kind of blanking, uh, but yeah, great, great cast of ringers and some sort of uh, dramatic. Uh, I mean, if I look at this real quick, I'm not. I'm not getting a phone call. I'm just trying to refresh my memory on the on the cast it's been so long since we did this whole lot. Uh, are they appearing of themselves or are their characters in the Pardon? Are, are folks appearing as themselves or are they Oh they're all appearing oh, okay. as themselves. Okay. There's um I will tell uh, uh Paul Walter Hauser. Paul Walter Hauser, yeah. He's unbelievable. He's never done voiceover until this. And really? he is great. He is killer in the, He's killer in everything. Yeah. Um, Blair Sochi, Lauren Holt, Kyle Kinane. Wow. Uh, killer Mike, LP. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, How was it working with Killer Mike? Oh, he's great. I mean, he's kind of like an Atlanta legend, but the... the like Jason DeMarco, our head of on air, kind of got him and LP together, and so Run the Jewels started at started at William Street. Yeah, and because Killer Mike had an album with our William Street Records before uh, they got together and did Run the Jewels. So they did the song for the movie, uh, the new Aqua Teen theme song. Nice. Um, and uh, we both, we cast them both in his little roles in the thing. But he's got a very pivotal role. Very pivotal role. Um, but he's, uh, he's awesome. You know, he's just sort of an Atlanta legend. He uh, is. I mean, he's doing, he's doing shit with the mayor. <laughs> like, <laughs> something yeah, happens sure. in Atlanta, they bring in Killer Mike. And they bring in T.I., and T.I.'s like, why am I here? You know, <laughs> Killer Mike's like, well, no, we'll, 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 yeah. But he also owns, like, owns a bunch of stuff in the West Side. He's great. Is there anything in the movie in particular that you, like, can't wait to be out there, that you can't wait for people to see? The interactive element. I thought we were going to do it here tonight. I understand why we didn't. Um, and you'll see in the, like the first four minutes of the movie, you'll see, and you'll understand probably why we didn't do it. But um, that element, I really wanted to see that. I cannot wait to see this now. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's something you've seen in... Um, the real world around you, but it's not something that you've seen in a movie, and it's something that will is I urge you to follow our instructions. <laughs> when this comes out November eighth, it is is well worth it. Do you think there might be a theatrical release? That's, no, 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 no. I, I mean, I mean, I, are you kidding? I would love that. I would love that, but you know, this is always designed as like. DVD, VOD, and then a few months from now it'll be on HBO Max. 
but could be a Rocky Horror, you know, midnight show kind of thing. <laughs> I do. I think it's t- you know our first movie kind of. I'll be the first to say it, our first movie kind of sucked. I mean, it was like it's just too long and it's kind of a mess, and we didn't know really what we were doing. Like this, this feels like a movie. It doesn't feel like just sort of some episode that stretched to seventy minutes. It's like it feels like. It's an emotional journey, and it's funny, and then, and then it's also got this element that I referenced that kind of spackles over some of the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> so you would say pretty much, because I mean, like, making short content, of course, like episodes, and then trying to translate that into a movie, y'all learn from the first movie, and into the second, what was something you wanted to have more cohesive this time since you felt the first one wasn't like all put together? Well, that's the thing. The, the first one I thought had funny stuff uh, in it. Well, like funny stuff throughout, but it's like if you're not. I always think people's minds are working on two levels. It's like they're, they're wanting jokes, like, joke, I want a joke, I want a joke, I want a joke. But then their other mind is like, what's happening with this guy? What does he want, you know? Uh, and why is it going over here? You know, and you can't you can't do a movie full of non sequiturs. It's just crazy, you know. And I feel like that was sort of the first movie. But like at the end of the day, there just wasn't enough story narrative to hang. And this has actually got a big. I feel like it's got a big story because it's now you sort of think the show is ended, and these characters are all scattered, and they're no longer the Aquatines. So it's a matter of how or are they going to get back together to deal with this larger problem, you know? And that's, that's a very generic way of saying it, but that's, 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 that's a story, you know? And it's, it's uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's worth, worth the time to watch it. You know? so, so it's got like a lot of emotion, emotional heft, pretty much. I mean, as emotional as we're. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are there any um, meat wad lines or fall lines that kind of follow you around? You know, when you meet people or just that have to yeah, do stuff yeah, with we, you? Yeah, yeah, we got. And there, there's some little Easter egg references. There's one that wasn't even in a script. It was just something in the booth where it was like, where Carl just says, uh, he and Shake think they're both going to get married to the same woman that they brought here from Russia. And he <laughs> can't pronounce her last name. And he just says, ah. It don't matter. None of this matters. <laughs> that is something that people say a lot. So we, that makes it its way back in the movie. Um, I, I always hear about Meatwad when he's in the Balloon and Stein episode and he's out to sea and they're telling him what to do and he's like, You right now? You right now? You right now is, is what I hear a lot. <laughs> So do you see like when you're in the airport or you're at the library or whatever and people come up to you and do the, no, because they don't, do they? No, they don't know. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. It, it happens like once every two years and it's always nice. It's always nicer if some guys like, listen, I work at Jersey Mike's Sub if you ever want a free six inch. I'm your guy. Ask for Randy. And that stuff, my kids will have a field day with that. You know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's sort of. But it, it, that's nice. It's nice. It's enough. It's, it's just right. I always loved uh, Carl's Stone Cold Lock of the Century of the Week. Uh, yeah. Where did that come about? Um, he kind of wanted some football. And it was always very funny because I always listen to sports talk radio. It was mm. always funny to have like um, Carl. Just seems like the typical chowderhead that would call in. Yeah. Wait online for 45 minutes so they could say, All right, uh, the Yankees are pissing me off. Um, first time listener, long time caller. Uh, they're pissing me off. We'll talk about how they're pissing you off too. Uh, I'll hang up and listen. You know? So he would be like a frequenter caller of like Mike Francesa or something like that to that effect, like the yeah. Yankees radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it sort of came out of that. And I'm an NFL fan, you know, so. It was really fun to kind of, and it was fun to go off on, 
not so much the sports, but just like someone like Brett Favre sending dick pics or something. Like Carl would have a very specific take on that. Mm. Basically boiling it down to, it ain't such a big deal. <laughs> you know, like Carl would have very specific takes on really the, the players off the field, you know. But the other we, lines I think I, I felt like we just kind of burned burned out on it, but I I do it again. And then uh, a guy who was started as an intern for us was helping me write him, Matt Foster. He's a producer on the movie now, but um, he helped me write him and produce him. And yeah, they're fun. They're fun yeah. Bins. Easily bingeable. We have a lot to say about the Giants this year. I like it. I can but imagine. Man, you know I can't. Uh, I'm not, I, look, I understand they got a new coach and they got a new system. They got to work with that. You know, I'm setting the bar low. I don't think it's a big deal to expect maybe 15-1 and one, and then they take it to the Super Bowl. Danny Dimes, you know. Danny Dimes. We got Danny Dimes. And, uh, you know, he was more like Danny Pennies. More like Danny Crypto. <laughs> which I lost a lot of money on. <laughs> Only Carl. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you guys with? Uh, I'm with the good print project. Okay. I'm with the work print. All right. Nice. I'm a skewed and review. Here's my car. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Geek Sheet Radio. What? Geek, Geek Sheet Radio. Oh, nice. Cool. Geek. You guys had fun? You interviewed anybody cool or... Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody cooler? <laughs> well, it's only Thursday. <laughs> Once you peak, though. <laughs> uh, have you been on the show floor recently? Or uh, are you looking forward to, or do you have time to do that? I would like to take a lap with my son mm -hmm. over here. He's uh, He wants to walk the floor. I think it closes at 7. seven. We're not doing the yeah. screening until 8.30. Are you guys going to the screening? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, huge, Massive. crazy. Uh, I haven't been to San Diego. I've never taken my kids to San Diego, but this one is, this is huge. I heard that all we're doing is like 2,000. I was like... 2,000 people going to be watching this? <laughs> All right. Cool. You know, no pressure. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, mean, I, I just like the immenseness and the excitability of Comic-Con itself. Just mm -hmm. Comic-Con itself is awesome. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, it's, got, it's gotten to be freaking huge. You ever been to San Diego? No. Want to go at some yeah. point. Yeah. That's where it's crazy. Yeah, that kind of jumped the shark. I felt like. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the year where, like, uh, it was like looking at a line, like there was six blocks long. It was like, what is this for? It was like, this is the signing for Halle Berry. It was wow. like Catwoman, like when that came out. <laughs> yeah, and Angelina Jolie was doing like Tomb Raider, and she had a similar thing. I was like, this is nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah, they've expanded just the Jacob Javits Center, so there's a bit more room to breathe a little bit, mm -hmm. which is really nice. It's been a while since I've been here, yeah. so did a great job. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. You got any other questions? <laughs> How is your ride here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone wanted to buy a car from my hotel. Really? Yeah, Grizzlies. Like Grizzlies. They shut down the road. And it's New York so, traffic to too, so. Down. Yeah. <laughs> Brutal though. Oh. Brutal. Yeah. What are you looking forward to here? Like, you know, when you were coming and you said, okay, we're going to be at Comic Con, what do, what do you want to see? What are you, what are you into? Um, in New York or well, at Comic-Con? Well, or? either. Um, well, first off, selfishly, I, I, I want to see how the movie plays in a big room. Like that, because we're not going to have that opportunity. You know, the first movie, like I bought tickets to like five different theaters and I just drove around that opening night and I remember seeing an elderly couple like rapidly walking up the aisle like after the first <laughs> song. And nice. I was like, they were clearly like, 
This is not a, a Merchant Ivory production, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But um, so that's that, you know, because this will be the only like real screening of this. Not if I have something to do with it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I hope so. Um, and then uh, uh, I know those Squalaman guys a little bit. They do smiling friends. And, mm. um, I just met them at an event, uh, the Philly uh, Adult Swim Fest, uh, like a month ago. It was super nice. So we'll probably look forward to see that. But I'm headed home tomorrow, so I'm gonna miss, uh, miss some of the other stuff. I, I guess I would have liked to see uh, Crapopolis too, the mm. Dan Harmon thing. I saw a little uh, clip of it. It was really funny. Um, so. He's a genius man. I, you know, I don't know. Are they doing a Solar Opposites thing? I kind of like Solar Opposites. Oh, was it good? Um, yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, so I would have liked to see that, but it didn't. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much excited to see it. Well, thank y'all. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Enjoy the screening thing. Oh,